envy. It's a nasty little feeling none of us would like to admit that we experience. Envy isn't looking at someone's cool new shoes and thinking, those are cool shoes, it'd be nice to have a pair. Envy is what happens when you let that thought fester until it turns into something much uglier, like frustration, anger, self-pity, or even hatred. There's a guy in scripture named Saul who did just that. He was the king of Israel, but when he found out God wanted a new king, Saul didn't take it too well. He was so jealous of David that he tried to kill him. Now Saul's story is pretty extreme and not something like one of our own stories, but it's a reminder of how just destructive jealousy can actually be. And it won't be easy, but instead of letting ourselves be consumed by self-pity or hatred, God invites us to love the people that we envy and see how it changes our hearts. In the Bible, we find a story about a time when envy slowly destroyed a man named King Saul. Now Saul was the king of Israel, but he had a problem. Because Saul had been so disobedient to God, God rejected Saul and chose a young shepherd boy named David to be the new king of Israel. And Saul knew a new king was coming, but he didn't know who it would be. When Saul first encountered David, he was impressed. David played music for him and even defeated a really scary enemy for Saul's army. Maybe you've heard the story of David and Goliath. Now Goliath was a Philistine warrior who David defeated with a simple slingshot and with God's help when no one else in Saul's army was willing to risk it. David became best friends with King Saul's son named Jonathan. David even led tons of missions for Saul's army and always did them really well. But then Saul let envy creep in. He saw strength and potential in David and didn't like that other people saw it too. While David was being recognized and celebrated, Saul's envy began to grow. We read in 1 Samuel 18 verses 6 to 11. When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing, with joyful songs and with timbrels and lyres. As they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. They had credited David with tens of thousands, he thought, but me with only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? And from that time on, Saul kept a really close eye on David. And the next day, an evil spirit from God came forcefully on Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the lyre, as he usually did. It's like an instrument. Paul had a spear in his hand and he hurled it, saying to himself, I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. That took a turn. That's a huge turn of events. Saul wasn't interested in celebrating David or recognizing his achievements. He wanted him gone. Saul's jealousy was so great that he decided to cancel David once and for all with a spear. So who are you in this story do you relate to? Are you like David? Do you feel like someone or a group of people are always out to get you because they're jealous of you? Do you feel alone? confused or like you've been canceled or are you like Saul you've probably never thrown a spear at someone I hope but is there someone you thought about while hearing Saul's story someone you really dislike if you're honest you're a little bit jealous of them are you like both chances are you have things in common with both Saul and David I know I do no matter how you relate to David and Saul I think we can all agree that envy destroys our relationships because you can't grow love and let envy grow at the exact same time. It's just not possible. But how do we stop being envious? Well, it starts by finding contentment, fulfillment, and peace in God who made us. But getting our hearts right is only the first step in replacing envy with love. And if we really wanna love people we envy, we have to do something more. Instead of envying people who have something that we want, what if we decided to celebrate them? Instead of imitating the call-out culture of the world around us, what if we chose to call out others' greatness? Let's start with practicing this right now. Let's start changing our culture for the better by celebrating each other, calling out the greatness we see in others, and thinking of ways we can share what we have. What I'm challenging you to do isn't easy. Loving people we envy isn't natural, but with God's help and Jesus' example, I think we can learn how to do it well. If you want to love like Jesus does, and I hope you do, love the people that you envy.